Hey everyone, today we're going to do a full end-to-end -end of creating a Spring Boot application, creating a Docker image from that application, pushing the image to Docker Hub, and running that as a container in Google Kubernetes Engine. So first of all, I'm at the Spring Initializer. I'm going to create a new, a new project called My Demo, and I'm creating a Maven project using the Kotlin language. I'm going to add one dependency, which is Spring Web. Now I can generate my project. I'm just going to copy this project to my desktop and unzip it. So now I have this file called my demo uh, on my desktop and I'm ready to open that in my IDE. So I'm going to move into that directory and I'm going to open that in IDEA or whatever um, IDE you're using that's that's okay too. So now the project's loaded we're just going to create one file Kotlin file and we're just going to call this controller. So you can use whatever language you want, it doesn't really make a big difference uh, if you're using Java or Kotlin. So we're going to create a REST controller and this is going to be a class controller. It's going to have one function. Uh, we just call this hello world. It's going to return a string and we're just going to return hello world. So now if we run this application, we should have one endpoint um, that returns hello world. If I have my get mapping, like that. Cool, so let's run this project. And it's running now. So if I go back into my browser and I go to localhost 8080, uh, we can see we're hitting that endpoint and we're getting the message that we set, hello world. Cool, so we know our application's working. We can stop it now. So now we want to create a Docker image from this. So Maven actually provides this by default using build packs. You can also do it with Gradle. Um, so we basically have this command that we can run, which is Maven W Spring Boot build image. And this builds a local Docker image. So that took a minute, um, but that created the image. If we use Docker images, you will need Docker installed to do this. Uh, we can see that we have this um, this project, my demo that was just created. I'm not sure why the created date is 41 years ago, um, but this is this is the name that I gave my project, so that's that's what that is. Um, so now we want to push this Docker image to a Docker registry so that Google Kubernetes engine can find it. So the easiest way to do that is using Docker Hub. So you might need to create an account here, um, but once you have an account, you're basically able to log in log into that account from your uh, command line, like this, docker login. Um, I'm already logged in uh, using my credentials, so that's okay. So the next thing we want to do is tag our Docker image before we push it to the Docker Hub. So to do that, I'm just gonna say docker tag, and then we need the ID of our image, which is here, you can see image ID. So we're gonna copy that. And we want to tag that image with our Docker Hub username, first of all, because this is where it's gonna be pushed. So I'm just using that as my username. And then we want to give it a name. So we just called it my demo. So let's call it my demo. And we're gonna tag it with one. So this is the first version of this Docker image. So this has tagged the Docker image now, and now we're able to push this. So if we copy this, so the name without the tag, we can use docker push, and this will push it to Docker Hub. As we can see, it's going to push to docker.io forward slash my username forward slash the name that I gave it. So this will take a minute, but it's gonna push it to Docker Hub. So as we can see, that's finished. Now, if I go back over to Docker Hub and refresh, we should see the new repository here. So we just pushed my demo a few seconds ago, so it's there. So that is the Docker Hub and the Spring part completed. So now we just want to run this application as a pod in Kubernetes. And our choice today is using Google Kubernetes Engine. So here I'm in the Google Cloud Platform um, 
I'm using my free trial, which is great. So you can basically play around and you have a bunch of free credits, but you will need to create an account on Google Cloud Platform to do this. But this won't cost you anything if you have free credits. So now that we're here in the Google Cloud Platform, we're gonna open up the Cloud Shell. So this is gonna allow us to create resources and interact using this shell, which is great. You can also do the same thing by uh, point and click but I like to do it in a programmatic way. So the first thing we want to do is check our config. So we're just gonna see we are signed in and we have a project. I've created one project called demo project. You'll need to do that too. So once you've done that, when you open the shell, you should see something exactly like this. And by the way, I'm gonna be deleting this project so you don't need to try to use my, my credentials or anything like that. Cool. So now that we know we're in our project, we want to set our zone before we can create our cluster for Kubernetes. So to do that, we're gonna say gcloud set compute zone. And we're just gonna use us central one a for this. So this is just the, the zone that we're gonna use. This is gonna set our zone and I forgot to say gcloud config set. So this is setter zone. So now we want to create our cluster. So to do that, we can use gcloud container clusters create. And we're just going to call it my cluster. I need to set the number of nodes. This is a really small project, so we're just going to say number of nodes equals one. So this is going to create a cluster and this will take a minute but once it's finished we'll have our cluster up and running okay so now our cluster is ready um so we want to deploy something to this cluster if you're familiar with kubernetes and kubectl we're now able to get the credentials for um for interacting with this cluster using kubectl so to do that we just use gcloud container clusters get credentials, my cluster. So this is just the name of the cluster we created and we're gonna get the credentials. So now we can see cube config entry generated for my cluster. So now we can use kubectl. So if we were getting the pods, we can see that there's no resources there. The same if we get the deployments, there is no deployments there. So now we want to create a deployment using the image that we created. So to do that, we're going to use kubectl create deployment web server. This is just the name of our deployment. And we're going to use an image. So now we want to get um, the image. So we could see here that it pushed to docker.io forward slash Chris Foster 96, my demo. So we're going to use that. And we could also get this from, from here. We can see it was pushed there. Um, and if we go into it, there should be one tag because um, we want to use that tag. And I think we just named it one. So that's what we want to do. As you can see, this gave us the full, um, the full path. So going back here, we just want to use the first tag like that. And this is going to create a deployment using this Docker image. So straight away, it was created. And now if we run the commands we ran a second ago, first of all, we can get the deployment. Uh, so we can see that it's not quite ready yet. And if we get the pod, uh, we can see it's actually ready now. So it's running, it hasn't been restarted. And if we go back to deployments, we can see it's there. So let's do kubectl get pods. And we can see that this is the pod name. So now we can actually do kubectl logs and get the logs of that just to make sure that it started and it looks like it started, so that's great. So now how can we how can we use this? How can we use our web server? So we have this pod, but this pod can't be accessed from the outside world yet or from the public internet. So we need to, to expose it using a service. So we can create a service with kubectl. Uh, using the expose deployment 
command. Deployment, and we're going to use the name of our deployment, which is web server, and the type, which is load balancer. So we're going to create a load balancer service, and now we just need to map our ports. So the port is 8080, and we're going to map that to the target port, which is um, the port that's running inside the pod, and that's also 8080. So this all looks good. We're going to expose the deployment using a service and we can see it was exposed. So now how can we how can we get the endpoint to hit? So we can use kubectl get services and this is going to get all of the services. We can see that there's one default service created along with the cluster. Um, so we don't need to worry about this. The one that we just created was this second one, web server. And the thing that we care about here is the external IP. But as you can see, it's pending right now, so it's not ready. So we can watch that to see when it changes. We can see it actually just changed. So we now have this web server and it has an external IP. So if I grab this IP address, I should be able to go into the browser and go to port 8080 and we can see it worked. So we're now hitting, hitting our, our service and that's being routed to our pod and our pod is running our Spring Boot application which has a controller that's returning hello world. So this whole thing, um, in this video, we created a Spring Boot application, we created a Docker image from that, we pushed the image to Docker Hub, and then from Google Cloud Platform, using Google, Google Kubernetes engine, we were able to run that image as a container in our Kubernetes cluster. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.